What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy Got Inks. Back with a topic. It's kind of cold. It's fall. I just had my birthday. I'm looking handsome, man. You know, I got a bald spot. I lost my hair at 25. That's another story. But anyway, I'm in these YouTube streets, and uh, Abba and Priest just dropped the video. Cool. So gonna take a listen so what they're talking about in this video is um, how pushing health uh, your eating habits on other people and I mean I dealt with this personally but I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna share my personal uh, thoughts and give an additional context on it because I dealt with this myself and that's what put me on this these my workout kit but Let's get it. We dying out here. I got us donuts. Those are so bad for you. Oh no, are they moldy? I mean, no. are they poisoned? Oh. Are you allergic? No, I'm just saying. Mm. You're judging my food choices based on a false standard of health again, aren't you? Guilty. Diet culture, fat phobia, and systems of oppression have created false hierarchies of food and it shows up everywhere. Like, eating habits, number one, are, I mean, we are born with it. I mean, we inherit our eating culture. Regardless of what you do, it's ingrained in you to a certain extent. You know, for me, and I have my children, if they eat bad, it's based off of what I decide for them to eat. Like, I mean, at this point, you know, my son, for his school lunches, Pretty much, they just they just feed them carbs and meat. They have an option to eat vegetables. He has a, a a little bit of a account to where he can buy things, and I limit those. But um, and he eats snacks. He eats snacks more than what we used to do when I was younger. Like we used to eat. I mean, we rarely ate. We rarely ate snacks, and they have like two to three snacks a day. So this is between him going to lunch. He'll have a snack. Well, breakfast, snack, then lunch, then a snack. And so when he get home, he often wants something to eat, which I remember when I came home, I was the same way. But we're going to continue with the video and I can share some more thoughts on it. It's not because those food are going to make you fat. It's because those food, even if they don't make you fat, are not good for you. Even if you don't get fat from those food, it can still fuck you up. It's not because you got diabetes that you're fat. Those food are not good for you. They're not good. They're not. It's not because you're fat. You could be skinny, skinny, and you eat them foods and you have a fast metabolism, but your arteries are clogged, boo-boo, honey, chicken, cherry chop. To that point of being uh, skinny, yes, there's a such thing called skinny fat. And I, and I took the time to pull the definition of it. Skinny fat is a term, you, term that refers to having a relatively high percentage of body fat and low amount of muscle mass despite having a normal BMI. People of this body composition may be at a heightened risk of developing diabetes and heart disease. So even if you don't work out, like people that are obese know that they're obese because they see it. They can go to the um, they can go to the mirror and it automatically shows them. But if you are skinny and you don't work out at all and you eat bad, you're just as bad. So that's a that's a that's a misconception right there. People think that fat people are sick and bad. Skinny small people have the same particular type of issue because you're not working out. You're not uh, you're not you're not uh, pushing your heart to its uh, you're not giving your heart the minor the right amount of exercise or um, allowing it to pump blood when necessary. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. I just I just made up someone, but <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. But uh, back to what he was saying. But skinny fat, yes. If you're skinny and you don't work out, you're still in a bad 
uh, situation. So no, it's not based on standards. It's based on facts. Let's not even go into the how your body is going to look if you take those foods. Let's not go in there. At all sizes, you could be, you could be, you could be fucked. And them foods are not going to help you. Period blank. This is not. Sorry. I thought you said period blood. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> period blood. Shout out to Adam Whatever the Priest. fuck. Cool. Hey, yo, period blood. Period blank. Canadians would have That's twist. it. This is not even a discussion. This is not an argument. This is not a thing. We're not even going to base ourselves to how your body's going to look if you all is just eat those food. Doesn't matter. It's really it's really irrelevant because you could still be skinny and be dying. Yes. If you eat those food, if your Absolutely. diet only consists of those food, it's not healthy. Period. For instance, there's this dude that uh he was working out and and he he actually does uh videos to where his diet is terrible and he shows this and so he does uh he does intermittent fasting that's another topic and so he shows how his his body is like ripped he's cut but he shows that he eats horrible you know what i mean so the thing is your on the outside, it's almost like a car. Your body, I mean, the your aesthetic could look great, but your internal could look shitty. So that that's what it, that's what he's really speaking about. Harmful thought patterns like earning food through exercising, or that dessert is the reward for the punishment of eating vegetables. Remember that you do not need to earn food. We are all incorrectly taught from a young age that our size and therefore the foods that we eat are markers of our self-worth. Moralizing food can lead to harmful relationships of food and disordered eating. Instead of focusing on good and bad choices, try to approach food with neutrality in mind. There's good food and there's bad food. Stop. 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 Now with that, what she's saying is trying to look at food with a neutral mindset. I sort of kind of agree with them. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna let uh, preach finish, but I sort of kind of agree with her. What she's saying is your body doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know whether or not. Um, now it it will know. It only uses your your body. Your body only uses food for energy. Period. So as an example. When your body is, when you starve yourself, your body actually starts to go through a process of attempting to break down existing fat, existing muscle, and burn it for energy. Yes, it will burn muscle for energy. It will burn your own muscle. It will burn your own fat. It doesn't know anything. Only thing it needs to do is I need energy. Now, there's a high concentrated of whatever you eat, for instance, sugar. Um, if you, of course, like if you drink too much water, too much water is bad for you. So, yeah. Too much of a good thing is bad, but you do have to look at food with a neutral mindset, but you have to understand the calories that they are. So if that makes sense, but preach, go ahead. That's really ignorant, very harmful what you're doing right now. It's stupid, it's ignorant, it's harmful, it's fucked up. Just you being black, yeah, just you being black and pushing that narrative is fucked up, my G. Oh, don't worry about water. Drink Kool-Aid. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> we dying out here. Very true. I got some of my cousins in the States. They wish they would be in Canada. Just because the food is different. The death. And when, with that being said, like, I have a lot, like, I, me personally, and this me going into my story story uh my grandmother just died from a heart attack she had multiple strokes um she had diabetes type 2 if i'm not mistaken my uncle was diagnosed with uh type 2 diabetes now now know that type 2 diabetes is a uh a diabetes that you develop type 1 is one that you inherit so type 2 you can actually be you can prevent but if you're eating bad you it will lead you down this path my grandfather died from um, a heart attack. Um, I was diagnosed um, some time ago, ten years ago, with prehypertension. That's what put that's what put me on my path 
before um, I started running and doing uh, exercising, watching my weight after that point because I was diagnosed at an early age with it. I had a friend that was diagnosed with, uh, he had a stroke real early on. I think he was in his early 20s back when we was young. So for, for black people, cardiovas cardiovascular disease is horrible. It's, it's terrible. It tore, matter of fact, again, my uncle, I had an uncle that died from a heart attack. So um, it, 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 it runs rampant in the black community. That's why when it hit, when COVID came, it, it, it tore through us because our bodies are not ready for it based off our eating habits, based off what we do. We are not ready for it. Now, I, I go to the gym three to four times a week. I take my children. My wife goes. We live a healthy lifestyle. And a lot of people pray for um, pray for healthy healthiness, but it's something you have to work towards. So, I mean, when it comes to health, I am very passionate about it. I don't push it on no one. A lot of people, once they get around us or get around me, they will ask us about our workout, and I don't push it because I get it. I mean... Health to pursue uh, being healthy, you have to. It has to be personally within you. It has to be a personal drive. No one on the outside could do that. Desert is different. Yeah, desert, not desert. Whatever. We eat differently. What the fuck are you talking about? We black. We dying up in here. Motherfuckers just gonna chomp on everything. And yes, I'm talking about soul food too. Yeah. If you eat Haitian food every day, you're fucked. The amount of oil and butter that we put, come at me. I don't give a fuck. If you come at me, you're as dumb and stupid as them. Of course, there's a way to cook it that's going to be healthy. But it's not going to be as much salt and fat and oil. That's going to fuck up your arteries. That's a fact, my G. That's the boondocks all over again. Talk about soul food. And we call it soul food because it kills the body and the food, the soul is left. You can't be eating a Popeyes every day. True. Stop. You can't. I could keep going on. Like you can't. Like I, I, I have to stress this. Like I talked to the elders in my family about it. We talked to my wife's mom about it. We talked to people about it. You know, we we're talking about early signs we're talking about pacemakers at you know early ages you know inflammation like these are real things like these are seriously real things so when i see people that just casually talk about eating and i know i know again obese people fat people are the ones that get it the most but it's a overall a health style it's a overall a lifestyle choice with anybody now do i eat no, I do I eat healthy all the time? No, I don't. You know, but I make healthy options. Most of the time, I don't even I for me, I don't even eat breakfast in the morning. I will eat I'll eat breakfast after my workout, smoothie, and then I'll take care of do whatever I need to do. But I, I do a lot more healthy options, especially after I met my wife. Cause she's a health nut. I make the joke that <laughs> my wife can find a salad anywhere. And that's just her. But <laughs> yes. Food deserts are real. Food does. You got the preservatives. Like there's preservatives in foods that cause uh that that cause migraines. Like I actually understood that once I realized that I started having migraines. Like migraines is set off by chocolate, food, certain foods. It does that. Like it is real serious. And I don't really think people know that. And there are a lot more preservatives in food than there used to be. And a lot of places are better. So there's no such thing as good food. Yes, there is. Quality. There food. is. There is. You want me to make this juicier for you? Go ahead. She's a nutritionist. You want to hear the secular juice apart? She works for Mondelez International, which is a chocolate production company. You're getting paid. You're getting paid, boo boo. That's it. Y'all remember 
when we were growing up, they were selling us on three meals a day. Yeah. And telling us we had to ingest all this milk. Yeah. And all this. And those carbohydrates. Right. And it turned cool. out the people who were manufacturing these studies that were. Are the milk producers! I'm just saying. All the people that are telling us to, to eat all those carbohydrates are the people, are, are all the, the wheat and the, the fucking industry. It's what we call a yeah, lobby, motherfuckers. Like, the only foods that are bad for you are foods that contain allergens, poisons, and contaminants. Or food that is spoiled or is otherwise inedible. Eat without guilt, regardless of what society says. Eat without guilt. Jesus Christ. My mama say, Mama, son, my Michael saw you're dumb. I love food. I love to cook, right? I really love it. It's one of my passions. I love to discover different things and stuff like that and methods. And whenever you have food, you have to know where your food comes from. If you're from an, um, um, an ethnic group that has been known to be poor, all right, you have to watch the history of your food and you have to watch where your food comes True. from, okay? You have to watch in which settings the food that you have was made, right? All the soul food, all the people from the Caribbeans and stuff like that. You have to understand. You have to understand. I'm sorry. You have to understand where your food comes from. You know what I mean? You have to know where your food come from. You have to know where it's from and what settings it was from. I'm talking about all my Caribbean people. I'm talking about all my Latinos. I'm talking about all my natives, motherfuckers. You understand what I'm saying? All you have to know that you were given rubbish to eat and with your creativity you made good thing good tasting food out of it props to you but you cannot eat that all day every day and not he's saying it and and i eat cheddar ones <laughs> oh man he's saying that and i eat cheddar ones i'm gonna have to bring up a picture of cheddar ones if you don't know what that is Wrong. you can't be on jerk and oxtail and rice and beans and grill and bannock and fry bread and tacos all day every day you cannot you can't and i know there's an attachment to that because your grandmama made it and then your mama made it and then all and there's, 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 a, there's a, that attachment to that that grill that banan pizza or that frita i understand I understand. You're looking at, oh, chicharron is the thing. You know what I mean? Oh, let's go. I'm going to go in on all that. Uh, all of that shit is great. You can't do that. Why? Because for real, for real, it was poor people food. Yeah. And it gave you scrap and we made the best thing out of it. And to remove the taste and to make it better, what do we do? We fry shit. I worked in the restaurant industry and they really make things, they really want to make things sound good. You know how they make some things sound good? I'm going to tell you. That's just one little ex example. Little example. Instead of putting fried on the menu, they put tempura. Because the ladies don't want fried food. They want tempura because it sounds good. It sounds exotic. <laughs> if I'm out with my girls, nobody wants some fried shrimp. Shit, I'm looking for my belly. But tempura is just marketed in something else for you to eat it. And it's not necessarily good. If you eat fried food all the time, blood pressure will ensue. That is true. It will. Very true. That's a fact. Yes. You eat salty food all the time. I'm talking about black people and my Latino people are all there. Blood pressure, diabetes is going to ensue. You don't want to do that? Fine. Eat all the fucking food you want. Do your fucking thing. Listen to hip hop. Carry your fucking piece outside and be fucking outlandish. I mean, at this point, might as well do all these things because it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's not good. Just know that. And it's not someone that's trying to like put some shit in your mind and make it's not it's not that. I'm just sick and tired of waking up in the morning and watching the rappers that I used to listen die at 54. 54, my nigga? From getting shot five times? 50, no. He's saying rappers, but like I just said it earlier, it has affected my family. It's been rampant in my family. And to this day, you know, there's people that have it, you know, that deal with these issues. And so, you know, I used to, I think once COVID hit, and I know people that have lost family to it, that's when it, it became a reality, but because it started exacerbating certain issues. So 
it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to say and i know that we're a lot of people are preaching body positivity and especially when we're in a time where we're trying to uh neutralize the the social we're trying to neutralize neutralize the social atmosphere to where everyone is treated with the same respect but i really think that is it to our detriment that we are doing this is it to our detriment that we are preaching body positivity and setting people up for failure i mean i you don't want to be those on the other end with di- you develop diabetes and they have to amputate your uh, one of your limbs. I have a um, a relative now that a slight fall has has put them in a condition to where now they have to learn to walk again. Basic stuff like that, like. I, and this is I, we talk about things that 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 torments our community, and you're and I see people talking about how black culture is trash and this, that, and the third when they're fat. You know what I mean? And they not talking about things that really bother us, and people that's small and and not working out like we're dealing with these things like. I think people really need to consider working out at all sizes, period. Everybody needs to consider working out. I don't care where you at, if it's a part of you or whatever, a walk or something like that. Switch it up. I, when I first met my wife, <laughs> I did used to eat a lot of carbs. I didn't even know what the word carbs was because I think the word carbs became popularized probably like a few years back. And so remember, it was like the low carb diets and things like that. And that's when, that's when I paid attention to it because I started looking at my food as protein, carb, vegetable. When I started looking at that way, that made me realize how I was really eating. So those types of things. And I know that from us in our generation, trying to talk to the elders, they won't listen because they feel that they are the ones that need to be listened to. But we are the ones that's going to be taking care of them as well as our children is going to be taking care of us. So I, my job as of today and as before has been to make sure that I, my make, I, that I make my children's life easier as I get older. I want to make sure that I'm in the best shape that I am when I become 70, 80, 90, whenever. That is my job. And I'm going to make sure that I I hold myself to it. I'm going to hold myself accountable to that. And I suggest y'all do the same. No, no, just dying. Just dying in their hotel room, just dying on the ground. Ooh, heart stop. We lost one of our Haitian fucking dude. I'm not saying that he had a bad diet. I don't know, but I'm sick and tired of seeing all that. Because we're eating, oh, every time I see that, I wake up in the morning, I see one, we lo- we lose one. We, oh my God, oh my God, we lost of a, fuck that shit, you could've, that shit could've been done a long ass time ago. 54, you know what's 54? I'm gonna tell you what 54 away, what 54 is. I'll tell you what 54 is. 54 is 14 years away from my age. And I'm on high blood pressure pills. Yeah. I'm gonna watch for diabetes. I gotta watch what I eat. This shit is coming. I'll, I'm at an age where I could reverse that shit still. You really wanna eat fucking seven pills a day? That's real. Eight. Shit, that's 14. 14 pills a day, you wanna do that? Do you, it's not a life. It's not fun. With all the side effects that it comes with that, I'm just saying that because I don't want it to be you. And it's fucked up. Eating all the food that you want all the time is dangerous. I did that, and that's where I am. Glutton. There. You can say I look good all the time. That's there. That's a reality. That's what I got to live with. 
Wake up in the wake up in the morning. I gotta take some. Going at night, I gotta take some. And God forbid that I. F and the reason why they probably tell him they look good is because he's a man. Most men don't get it as worse as women. When men tend to come at women about their sizes when men are just as bad bad at it too. We're worse. You see what I mean? So it's just as bad. But they'll say he looks good because he's a, he's a, a large male. That's the reason why. It's terrible. Forget, I forget it. <laughs> After that, you do whatever the fuck you want to do, man. You know, we've talked about this topic a lot over the last couple of weeks, and Bro. there's been a lot of different takes, and <clears throat> people are like, yo, why you get so heated about this? Like, it's not that deep. It, it is that deep, and it is that big, and it is that vast, it is that wide. You want to make all the fat jokes? I don't give a fuck. It is a huge problem, okay? I'm double entendre, triple entendre, all the roles, don't care. I meant what I said. It is a huge problem. Let's keep it a stack. These problems, whilst they're all over the country, all over the continent, all over the world that's growing, okay? They're especially true for minority communities because oftentimes Absolutely. the most unhealthy options are the most readily available and the ones that are gonna kill you the fastest. You got this crazy bitch telling you you can eat Oreos and not feel guilty. Uh, bitch, you should, you should. Not because I want you to feel bad about yourself, but because you got to understand that that relationship with food that you're building, that kind of sugar addiction, all that other bullshit, it will lead to an early grave. And I'm not even talking about the individuals necessarily. But I think about what this means for our community. There's already enough issues facing us, already enough stuff killing us, okay? From diseases, all right, to oppression, whatever you want to name it. Y'all want to add in food? Nah. Now, we've talked about all the systemic issues in regards to, like, poor health habits that are developed from, like, bad city planning and lo lack of access. We talked about all that stuff. But the personal accountability side, I, I don't like this media narrative that's really driven home by influencers like these and other, like, media conglomerates that are just like, well, you know, just because you're 300 pounds doesn't mean you're unhealthy. Okay. Okay. Cool story. So I get especially annoyed by this because the ones most affected are the poorest generally. That's almost always true for these kinds of issues. The ones who can afford to not give a fuck are the yuppie influencers and the people who got enough money to be able to pay for gastric bypasses, to get the finest trainers, to get a dietitian, to get a cook to cook for them. They don't really care because they can afford not to. It's poor people that suffer the most. So, bitch, if you want to eat a Twiki, eat a Twiki if you want to. I don't care. But don't come out here and say, that shit's cool. Or nobody should feel guilty about this. Or nobody should feel bad. Yeah, you feel bad. And I bet you're feeling bad right now with your legs all fucked up, heavy, heavy heaving, can't walk properly, can't wipe your own asshole, getting up out of a seat extra hard every fucking time. I bet you, uh, you feel a little bit of guilt then. Huh? When you go see the doctor in your mid thirties and he said, bitch, you got a couple years at most. If you keep going like this, yeah, I bet you're going to feel bad. Oh, yep. all of a sudden diabetes type two starts to develop. You were pre now you uh, post. I bet you feel bad now. That's it. You know, I can preach on and on cause, uh, it, my family deals with it. It doesn't sound like, you know, I'm in preach have well, I think preach is dealing with it directly, but I'm my family dealing with it. And I try my best to talk to them in reference to it, but there's only so much that I can really do. So I make sure that my family understands the meaning of it and we talk about it. And we can only show by example by what we do. People ask. I post it as much as possible on my personal Facebook page, and I motivate those that want to be motivated. I celebrate those that that actually work out. And I'm not talking about obese, fat people, or I'm talking about skinny people as well. You know, if you post it, then with it. I know I have a lot of people that I know that are personal trainers. So, yeah. 
You you want to be the one that has to that have to have your body amputated. You can't breathe. You can't walk. You're having um, back issues, body issues. It it trans it translate into other things. Would you rather pay for a gym membership versus a pill prescription? Because health bills are going to go up, especially if you don't have the money to take care of yourself when you get older. So you need to take this shit serious. I'm very serious when it comes to um, health. If people talk, I'm with it. But don't come to me talking about it and you're not with it. Because that's crap. Some bullshit. So, that's it. My personal story. I dealt with it. I was there. I refuse to be the one. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you the, the personal story. The reason why I did it. <laughs> what made me uh, finally go to the doctor? Boy, that's too embarrassing. You know, I don't think y'all ready for that yet. But anyway. Oh yeah. By the way, I just sent my album in. It's being mastered. Party and bullshit on the way. As of right now, December the 6th is my release date. Independent, baby. But I'm your boy, God Inks. Thanks for listening to this video. If you like, if you do like this video, like, share, subscribe, and comment. And let's keep the conversation going. You know, motivate your friends and family. Don't feel bad. It's okay. And men can be fat. Women can be fat. Children can be fat. Women can be skinny fat. Men can be skinny fat. Children can be skinny fat. If they're not watching their health. Parents, we are in control of our children. You don't have to always buy them fast food to eat. You don't have to. But I'll continue it on. If something else pops up, I'm going to drop another video. But this is me, it's your boy Got Inks, and I'm out. And as always, peace.